Dear Lord, please help me to trade like water and not get trapped in the month of March. <sighs> oh, sorry. Thank you for clicking on my video. Really appreciate it. Sorry, I was just praying because I think we're about to see more and more traps in March. As we move forward throughout the day, the reason that we could see a lot of traps in March is because even today's news, we could see a trap as of today with this bar right here we're going to talk about, but we could be getting trapped tomorrow with the PMI. We could get trapped all week long next week with Jerome Powell talking in Congress come Wednesday, and then also we have CPI right around the corner. So it's important we get into some technical analysis for the SPY Qs, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, NVIDIA, AMD, and Meta this week. And we're going to give you those daily expected moves for Friday here for all of the stocks that we're covering today. Let's get into it. First thing with the SPY, we also have those monthly expected moves for you. So you do have 522, 22 to the upside and 493, 94 to the downside. Not the biggest of ranges for the whole month of March, which means to me that we might be getting some whipsaws in this market throughout the whole month of March. Or if we want to break through that level, we could be seeing some kind of crash come forward. So we really have to be on our toes, be willing to flip and trade like water. And if I were you, I'd be praying because I don't want to get caught in one of these traps. And what are the traps that we're talking about? Well, let's first give you those daily ranges before we get into that. 511.69 to the upside. And we have 504.47 to the downside for the SPY. And as of right now, we're calling this pretty good. We said there would be some kind of trap down in this area based on the early um, daily expected moves Monday and Tuesday. And then we talked about possibly some kind of trap setting up right here. But as of today, we are now seeing possibly some selling come in right here, which opens the door for this to be some kind of trap, even though we got that confirmation. So just to talk about the spy here for a sec, this actually does look good. Now we have that opportunity for that positivity right as that positivity started to come in. We see that sell back off. So is that going to lead into possibly with this resistance up here, some kind of sell off with the PMI? Well, it's, it's expected to be good news for the market. So let's pay attention to that. Pay attention to that reaction uh, of the overall market. Now, with today's news being the PCE, we overall talked about how we did come in at consensus and people could see that as good news. But that is a 0.4 reading, something we have not seen an increase of 0.4 in the last 12 months. So this is following two months of 0.1 and 0.1, and then we get a 0.4. So that is a tick up, but people see that as consensus, originally good news, and then we see that start to fade, but buyers do not let this thing go down. They still see it as good news by the end of day. Will this selling be some kind of trap going into PMI, which is supposed to be pretty good news according to all the analysts. So that's something to pay attention to. Now, if we did want to head down from here, you're going to see a pretty good reaction here, right? Because we're still close to that center line, really can just pay attention to this hourly, see if this is able to see that strength early on in the morning. You do start to see that fade down early on in the day. Make sure that that reaction isn't happening really quick. If we see one hourly bar down and we come into that daily expected move, boom, 504.47 to the downside, we could see this curl back around. But if we start to confirm going into negative territory, breaking below this low, good shot that we're actually going to head to lower levels going on early into next week. Same thing with the cues. We really got to be praying here. Um, good, good portion of this. Now let's give you those monthly expected moves. Cues a little bit bigger range. We expect that 457.29 to the upside, and we have 420.71 <laughs> to the downside here. So we got that to cross into positive territory. We were talking about all this cupping going on. We were able to close that cup form some kind of handle over here. Let's see if we're able to go back up with that positive news. The good part about this crossing now is if PMI does come out as good news for the market, we're going to see a pretty good reaction. And 442.82 to the upside for that daily expected move, 435.18 to the downside for that daily expected move tomorrow. Okay, so tomorrow we're just paying attention to if this actually does want to confirm. Well, let's see where that could lead us. All right, let's see where that could lead us. And we could be getting even outside of that daily expected move okay so we could come up and touch that weekly will that start to fade towards the end of the day maybe some smart people trying to sell before any kind of news of a possible government shutdown there are just tons of things going on in the month of march that you have to pay attention to even going into tomorrow next week cpi we have all kinds of things that could really shake up this market and i think we're going to see a bunch of traps throughout the whole month of march until we see something really start to fall so to the downside, what we want to pay attention to is this low here. You notice it coincides with that first point of gap support. 
support. So if we start to break through that level and aren't able to buy back by end of day, we could see something a little bit more dramatic. So I want to pay attention to that. See if this MACD is able to get into negative territory as of tomorrow. If it's not, maybe we do see that positivity as we have crossed on this bar. Good chance of that at this point as we are in positive territory and we're seeing green bars on the histogram. We did complete that cup. We got some kind of handling in here. Now we have to see if we can see that strength good good probability that's going to happen especially if that pmi is good if that pmi is good for the market and we get a good reaction you're going to see some strength in this move going forward into tomorrow so um, the queue is looking pretty decent here nothing really telling me that we're going to head to lower levels the only thing that um, is bad for a trader is we're very dependent on that data and we have a lot a lot of news that can trap us multiple ways throughout the month of march now let's get into some juicy stuff with Apple. But first, just make sure to know that we are giving out those monthly expected moves for the individual stocks such as Apple and all the others on my Patreon. The link is down in the description. All it costs is a cup, a cup of coffee every single month to join us there where we give some trading ideas. Every single Wednesday, I put out an extra video that is not shown on YouTube going through these weekly ranges, seeing if we see any trade setups that have some good probabilities for some turnarounds, for some good trades. So make sure to join us there. We would love to have you and welcome to all the new members. We've seen a bunch of new members this week and I'm very happy to see it um, because I'm just excited that people are taking control, wanting to trade better. Now with Apple, we are getting a bunch of touches back into this zone. So that's something to pay attention to. Now you do have 182.86 to the upside for tomorrow, 178. 42 to the downside so if we did want to head down from here you still would be in this zone we can get some kind of positive reaction from this zone right now it's once we touch the top of it we want to go up once we touch the top of it we see that support come in so if we do start to break below this level we might go a little bit deeper towards that daily expected move something with the macd down here we're seeing a ton of divergences okay we see a ton of divergences across the board here so we do have that potential for momentum to shift the other way for apple over the next few days if it wants to curl up okay so this thing has to see some strength we haven't really seen a ton of strength and right now you're inviting some kind of head and shoulders to bust us down the good part about where apple is reacting off of this zone is a lot of the time you do want touches on the top of the zone in order to head higher you don't necessarily need to dip very low into a zone to head higher but unless it needs a liquidity grab right now just touch on the top of it we can see that strength come in that's very very good news for apple going into amazon we have those uh daily ranges for tomorrow that would be friday so for your options closing here you go and we're going to be adding these to the patreon giving it for free right now on youtube for a few weeks here maybe we'll give it for free during the whole month of March and then after March we might be in that bear market okay so pay attention to that 179.14 to the upside for tomorrow for Amazon 174.38 to the downside so the good part about this is if we do get excited get outside of this look for that to fade back down by end of day most likely making another point of divergence and we'll go through that over the Sunday video so join us back on Sunday make sure to subscribe thank you guys for joining me but right now you have to say a little bit bullish because look at that that's a stronger bar than what we see on the spy and the cues right this is a stronger bar getting above this high confirming that this is a cup in here here's your handle let's go higher so at this point you gotta say this is a little bit bullish but is that going to hold throughout the day tomorrow um something could be going on with that um government shutdown so just pay attention to that we could get good news with the pmi is this going to be a trap and that's why overall the theme of this video is i'd be praying i'd be praying to help me be adaptable and trade like water be willing to flip the script a bunch of times this is really where i shine i love when we start to see some fluctuation in price back and forth that's really where i like to be so uh, tomorrow just pay attention to these moves right if we're heading to the downside pretty quick in the morning we could see that reaction if we're heading to the upside pretty quick we could see the opposite reaction coming down. We could see some selling towards the end of the day. So just pay attention to that. But now you do have a couple levels to pay attention to. Tesla is going to be very interesting tomorrow. I had to fix those daily ranges for you. But 206.81 to the upside is our daily expected move to the upside and to the downside here. 196.79 to the downside. Tesla is going to be really interesting because 
Um, we're starting to come outside. If you're part of the Patreon, that weekly expected move, we're starting to come outside of that. And the other part about this daily expected move, look where it lands, right, right, right where we expect that resistance to come in. So if we get excited early on in the day, that could drop off pretty steep. OK, so this would give us that gap fill. If we do get excited, get a little bit above that, we'd get that full gap fill continuing on. Now, we could be in this for quite some time, right? We do see this wedging here. If we don't violate that wedging, could break it to the upside here we actually could see this continue for quite some time till we see some kind of drop out or some kind of push higher so really pay attention to tesla going on into tomorrow because that weekly range if you're part of the patreon you know it it's popping its head outside of there and if you if you could have gotten some little trades up here actually we could have gotten some good good stuff here because we've closed back within that weekly expected move multiple times now that daily are we going to go fill that gap tomorrow well this daily expected move is saying it is definitely Possible. Haven't turned up on that MACD, so a little bit different with Tesla over here. A little bit different because we haven't turned up on the MACD like the other stocks. So we haven't turned up. That means we open the door still for this to be some kind of flagging, able to break down, maybe with a little triple top up in here, um, able to break through this little range we're in. Going to see some lower prices, but really pay attention to if this is actually able to break because we could remain in this for quite some time before we see Tesla head to lower levels. Um, NVIDIA going forward, we do have the ranges, not the biggest range for tomorrow, but we expect some um, some volatility out of NVIDIA just because it is such a big weight in the stock market as of right now. Has not curled over on this hourly MACD. Good thing here is this is our first fake out that we were talking about. Boom, there's your, there's your cup, there's your handle. Called this as a fake out. Now we're starting to head higher. This was overall what I'm saying. Hey, now we're going to get this cup and handle to actually confirm, maybe go a little bit higher. Paying attention to our daily expected moves, 807.44 to the upside, 774.80 to the downside. Important part about this 807 up here, we talked about how important that 800 number is for this expiration tomorrow. Tons and tons and tons of calls at that 800 level. So really want to pay attention to that. If you start to get excited, get out of that, people might start to take profit, okay? So really pay attention if um, NVIDIA is able to see a strong move early on in the morning. And then if it wants to break down, those people can go underwater and we can see that sell button keep getting pushed. So if this starts to break below this, this daily expected move, look for one of those 32% chances. Sure, you do have a 68% chance to land back within this zone because that's what options have priced in for tomorrow. But you do have that chance of a 32% that something crazy is going to happen. And if this starts to sell off, all those people up here with those calls at 800 could be underwater, might start to hit that sell button if they're even able to. So really want to pay attention to NVIDIA, really pay attention to that 800 level. And then that level that we are also paying attention to, to the downside, even for tomorrow, still pay attention to 750 for that put wall. OK, now the one thing that I would say AMD seeing major strength here, still continued strength at this point. Um, kind of interested to see, but um, really starting to see some strength. Maybe this is people who want to get into NVIDIA, but they see that AMD is a little bit cheaper price. Now, if NVIDIA is or if AMD is telling us anything, maybe it's telling us that there is strength coming tomorrow um, with this very, very bullish. Um, I would say a squeeze. There's no selling in this whatsoever. Um, maybe people got heavy to the put side and then that positivity caused them to get out of some of those positions. So uh, wanted to pay attention to any kind of hourly divergence up here. We just violated that. So good chance that we're actually going to see an hourly divergence going on maybe into next week with a higher price again if we're able to consolidate sideways, meet up with some of these moving averages. So the levels you need to pay attention to for tomorrow, well, we were talking about it possibly hitting 200 early on in the week. Boom, 199.50 to the upside. 185.56 to the downside. So if we get excited to the downside, look for that to act as some support to then grab some buyers, maybe head a little higher, kind of connecting with this high up here. Um, something to pay attention to. Now, if we do get excited and get outside of that, remember 200 is a whole number. People like to sell past those whole numbers. That's kind of the hint we got last week with that 800 number on NVIDIA. Uh, with our weekly ranges, we were able to use that as a good point to say, hey, 820 to 830 was a good sell off. Now we're going to go with it one more time and say, hey, 200 is a good part where a good point where AMD traders could start to take profit. So really want to pay attention to that. Um, very, very overbought at this point. So I don't know if this will see consolidation. It might just keep blowing off until we hit that 200 number.
Meta is our last stock and we gave you those weekly ranges right up here and down here. Now we have the daily range, which is 498.47 to the upside, 481.79 to the downside. And this is what we were talking about. This market is going to be a bloodbath. And I would be praying if I were you that you don't get caught in one of these traps because look at this. We complete a cup, get the handle, even break through a little bit. And then we see that buy back up. So this was a big trap for Meta at this point. We have Zuckerberg selling millions on millions on millions of dollars worth of his own stock which is something to pay attention to now we have completed this overall cup and here we even completed it a little bit further right so uh, we've gotten some tricks in this cup and handle even so that's why i think this market's going to start to be a little bit back and forth be a lot of traps going forward because we completed a cupping in here with this pocket of liquidity and then we saw that round out didn't see that proved anything then we go ahead and we complete the actual full cup like this see that breakdown, not able to break through fully closing above this level here. So got to see if there's some strength left in this move. Meta, we were mainly paying attention to that 500 number. This top side of the range was something that we were really paying attention to this week. Really would think if tomorrow's positive news, maybe this actually gets up to a round number again, 500. People could start to take profit at that 500 level. It is a mental thing. It really does happen. And that's really how we were able to catch even SMCI, when we covered it before it hit a thousand, we said, Hey, you know, a thousand's probably where people are going to hit that sell button. Goes a little bit above a thousand, people start to hit that sell button. So, similar thing could happen here tomorrow if we do get that good news with PMI. If this wants to go negative, well, this hourly is going to quickly go into negative territory. You can even look at the shorter time frames to see if any negative trends are starting. So, if this wants to be one of our next fake outs, this is going to most likely come down, maybe take out this low if it's really bad. We might be seeing one of those 32% chance times where we actually see it head to lower levels as we do have a gap down here. So, we could be starting a negative trend as of tomorrow. Everything's really close to that center line. Um, but as of right now, we have to be a little bit bullish on this hourly. We crossed, we have the structure at this point to head higher, just need that good news to really project us. And I think people this whole week have been waiting for some really good news to really move some of these stocks. But the problem with moving higher is the VIX is still setting up more divergences. It's had an hour divergence here, an hour divergence here, an hour divergence. Now all the way up here right by that center line. This is when you really want to pay attention. See if this is able to break through that trend. Um, see if that's able to break through because that will get into positive territory and we can start to see that volatility. Now we did get the two hour two cross to the downside. Wanted to notify you about that. We can have a ton of hourly divergences um, when the fear is being sucked out of the market, which is what the VIX is telling you. There's not a lot of fear in the market right now. We can tell by those monthly ranges. They're not even pricing in a lot of movement. We could be getting a surprise in March and I think we might have the possibility as of tomorrow if that hourly doesn't curl up. Well, this two hour just crossed. We actually could be getting some kind of divergence right now. So you would have that divergence as of tomorrow. I think we got a good shot to come down and fill that gap and see that reaction going on into next week. So let's really pay attention to the price action here. Make sure we're trading like water out there. Another not so good sign in the market is the dollar here. The dollar, actually, we've been talking about how, well, you don't want the dollar in the market to look the same, right? Markets up, dollars up. That just tells you, hey, who are these people? Well, we know now they are the insiders. They are the Nancy Pelosi's of the world. And so we could see this start to rip higher. How, how do I know we could rip higher? Well, if you're a swing trader, you know this is your beatdown. You're above the 200. There you go. If you get this MACD to cross, you can see some strength in the dollar. Maybe we're going to go to our target up here of 105.65.653. That's really what I'm paying attention to with the dollar. So this is big news. As of today, we are up. Um, how much is this up today? We're up 0.22. Good bar getting us above our moving averages. This is starting to get pretty tight. So we could see an explosive move out of the dollar. That's not something you want to see when the SPY is up. By 0.36 today. It's just another time where we're seeing most likely retail traders, FOMOers getting into these moves. And then this might actually be ripped away because the insiders know something that we don't. So the main takeaway here is I think March might eat people alive. I think it might be a bloodbath, not in the fact that we might see a crash, which we possibly really could. We could see something breaking in the system and have to cut these rates. That's not a good thing. Um, so the, the reason it could be a bloodbath is because I think we're going to see traps all month long with all the data that we are dealing with i think we're going to see traps people are still going to remain bullish so i wouldn't expect this to go down in one one big drop i really would expect us to kind of hit the bumps in the road on the way down that's how i see this market shaping out so i would encourage you to pray and make sure that you are 
one of those people who are able to trade like water, move around those rocks and follow the stream once that um, stream is actually going in the right direction. You don't want to end up in the sewage, right? Thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Everyone that showed up to the live video, make sure you're smashing that like button for me, right? So I'm having a lot of fun and I think we're going to have a ton of fun in that live video tomorrow with all these daily expected moves. We're going to have a lot of ideas going forward in the first hour and a half, two hours of trading. And now you can pay attention to those all day long as your options expire on Friday. So really appreciate you guys stopping by. Make sure to check out the course, all that good stuff. We have a course that's going to be still 50% off the entire month of March. By the end of March, I think we'll be in a bear market. So um, that's where that strategy I give you in that course is very helpful. So I will be upping that to its maximum price of $200, but right now you can get it for 50% off down in the description. And I really appreciate everyone joining the Patreon. That's so awesome. Really, really appreciate it. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching to the end. I hope you have a great night, but I hope you have all the luck in the world trading tomorrow and in the whole month of March. Peace.